The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than it is, it's sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a put unto God, a workman that he doth not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. As we are continuing our series to answer back in a review as such, where we are, where we were, and where we are going, because the things which have been giving introduction so long a tape, the people may not be able to understand what exactly is the theme, what we are trying to tell, that Lord Jesus Christ was really crucified on the cross or not. Because the word is truth. Lord God the Father is truth. His spirit is truth. His words are infallible and inerrant. It is our errant mind wherewith we are not able to discern the word of the truth and the spiritual phenomena, not able to being under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Because many of the fools who are occupying the pulpits in today's apostasy period, they are saying that the baptism of the Holy Spirit has had to be occurred because which was a sign of a symbol in the hypostatic union period of dispensation when my Lord Jesus Christ was there, wherewith dove descended upon him as a way of a sign wherewith Lord told, I am well pleased, as a sign of a Holy Spirit. That was a period for them to show forth and to tell them the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is a way wherewith they should realize the anointing, that's what they could call. They should realize that He is the only God member, and they should realize that He is the only one who has that right from the birth of His physical virgin nature of through Mary. He has that controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and here when He has been there baptized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there it represents that He is there to show forth His mission. But that's not the same today in the, today's church age. The church age doctrine is totally different. The church age doctrine is at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, you are baptized into the royal family of God. And that baptism of royal family of God is not by your own works or your own efforts or your own good deeds or your own giving tithes or giving poised nature to time. No way, no chance at all. It is the ministry of common efficacious grace done at the moment of salvation by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you have been united into the royal family of God, as told in First Corinthians 12, 13, and then you have one mandate for you to be 100% followed, wherewith it says, be controlled of the Spirit, be filled of the Spirit. That is, you should not be under the controlling power of the all sin nature, but rather you should be under the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is your new husband. That is what it makes a difference in this church age. The church age doctrine wherewith regarding the Holy Spirit is a period of enlightenment. In the Old Testament, it was a period of endowment. When it was Lord's, Lord's case, it was a hypostatic union, the great power experiment period. So there is a lot of difference when you can understand the Gospels very clearly, wherein we have the center theme for crucifixion of my Lord. We have the center theme of his life and his purpose wherewith he has come to the lordship of Israel. And when that lordship of Israel couldn't fulfill, and he gave an open invitation to the entire nations wherewith we Gentiles are also come to look forth and to understand what exactly is the grace way which the Lord has provided for us by faith alone in Christ alone and showing forth the virginity of his messianship through the birth and even as such the priesthood, followed by the example of Melchizedek, who has been not born under the tribe of the Levite, who were then in the lions of Abraham, but then too he showed forth the virginity of his priesthood, wherewith we, the believers, also ought to show forth our priesthood in such a manner that we shall be exemplified our exploitation of maximum logistical grace given to us in this unique dispensation so that we can stand forth and tell before the sight of the Lord as a bond slave we have done that which is our duty to do as an unprofitable slave which is our duty to do we have performed it and we are showing it forth for you so that it could be a record for maximum glorification unto Christ in the history pages of our books because when we are the judgment seat of Christ we are like a book which will be open and each and every page is each and every day that you spend upon this world so how and what you have spent is your book worth to be read if your book is not worth to be read that is if you do your works of the same evil one of a dark ages wherewith we consider today an enlightenment age and we call the technologies to the core so when we consider the old typewriter machine in the 60s or 70s now it has been totally erased we have the touch mobiles which called smartphones and this is what we have been using wherewith when we just speak to them the words have been accurately recorded that's the technology that has come up so great and so vast it is so if you still follow that world thing what is there for you to understand exactly in the same dark ages if you're still 
following your old sin nature attitudes. That's what getting up morning and again falling into the same sin and again coming back, again rebounding, again coming back. Where is the point of your upgradation? Where is the point of your edification? Where is the point of your spiritual growth? And above all, we are having such kind of a traps placed in our pulpits, like these apostate leaders who are occupying the church. They call emotionalism is great, so we follow emotionalism. They call tongues is great, so they follow tongues. They call miracles are there, so they follow miracles. They call healings are there, they call, so they perform all the things of healings. What a sheer of blasphemy they are following. If we could read your book in the judgment seat of Christ, if you are not in accord with the post-canon period of completed canon of scripture in the, in, the, in the New Testament, then what is the point of a life that you are living in this world? Why you want to still live in a world of dilemma, not able to realize what exactly is the fact? Fact is what we have in the Bible doctrine when you learn dispensations. But when we have so much of debates to be done, Zachariah thinks that he can easily tell what about the crucifixion of my Lord. I ask him to ask a question if he really believe that there was a temple which was built by Solomon. And if he really believes what was the one and sacrifice which has been told and given in Hebrews 10, 14, that he perfected us forever, what the hell of an answer he has in his mind to tell to us. He thinks because of his logistical mind, wherewith he thinks in a way of logistics, easily he can understand the Bible and he can quote to us that Lord Jesus Christ was not really crucified but was crucifixed and it is a fictionized mind for so many Christians. It is a correction for you, Zachary Nayak, to correct yourself from Hebrews 10, 14, which says, For by one offering, Lord hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The sacrifice of Christ of himself has accomplished three things, incapable of a reputation. No one can do that except my Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, he answered to the full the claims of the throne of Jehovah, that is the integrity of my Lord, his standards have been satisfied. Number two, it has perfected the concise of a believer forever. That is what we believers in the Lord Jesus Christ have that faith, have that hope that is not just a hope, it is an absolute confidence in the Lord that we shall have eternal life with Him. And we are trichotomous in nature. We understand Bible doctrine only when we are under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's absolute consciousness, what we have. We have our royal high priest waiting for our, for, for our sake in heaven, whatever else could occur before, whether the rapture or any other thing of my death. We have an advocate in heaven sitting at the right hand of God the Father to claim and clear our cases when Satan accuses us because of our sins. That's why when you fail to rebound, Satan has more power to show forth the case. But when you rebound, then and then you take the installment of your suffering and you get out of that and you live a life and walk again for, ma for maximum glorification of Lord. And third, it has righteously opened a way, new and living, into the very presence of God himself. That's why we have in this unique dispensation of the church age, by faith alone in Christ alone, an open invitation for us, so that we can also have that absolute, absolute righteousness which God imputes to us at the moment of salvation and that absolute righteousness is what it has to be credited even for Zachary Reich to become from dichotomy to trichotomous in nature he possessing bo only body and soul now he has to possess body soul and activated human spirit and that's not possible for any member of the human race irrespective of the good deeds what he follows irrespective of the virtue things what he does irrespective of morality living what he lives no way no chance at all we have only one thing to be done that is to be having faith alone in Christ alone and believing upon the gospel that is Lord Jesus Christ is the one who has paid for us for the full of the cross we do not have anything for us to for, for, for us to work apart from to believe by faith which is a non-meritorious system of perception that is you require no faith at all to believe upon him inaudibly express your words because we are here to tell to you in a very simple manner if you have the son you have eternal life if you do not have the son you do not have life but you have the wrath of god abiding upon you and which way you choose it is left to you and but when you choose upon the lord jesus christ that is the moment itself that you shall be saved and that is the reason itself that you shall have eternal life and that is the claim itself what you can claim before the Lord, yes Lord, what words you have told that we have believed and that is the reason what we are having, we are having our eternal life. And if you fail to do it, Lord help you out. Because there is no way by your good deeds you can gain. No way the religion can come to God because religion is not Christianity. Christianity is a relationship with God the Father through His only begotten Son on the cross and believing upon that Son, we shall have eternal life. And religion is what you do upon your own works in the energy of your flesh. That is to gain salvation by God by saying that I also can work my own salvation. That's why I do all these good deeds. That's why I, I pay the tithe. That's why I pay the income tax. That's what the people call in the Old Testament time as tithes. This today, if you call as a tithe, it is an income tax to be paid. And that you have to go and put in the treasury box of the temple wherewith it has been constructed during the period of Solomon. 
but you do not have the temple now if you go to Palestine and you want to put it there. These all things in the sight of the Lord are ministers' cloth. These are rituals without reality. But we are living in the reality of the New Testament, wherewith it is so great, we are so unique in this dispensation, never will happen again, never will repeat again. It was never in the past, it will never be in the future. We have so great a privilege for us, given to us to live this life, wherewith we have been called for maximum glorification of the Christ. And what amount of doctrine you learn, what amount of doctrine you want to teach from the mystery doctrine of the church age. And if you still want to linger around with the book of Acts regarding those historical events, or in the book of Synoptic Gospels, wherewith you have the death, burial, and resurrection of my Lord so clearly told, even from the life of his record, of his physical birth, of his virgin nature, till to his spiritual death, and then his physical death, that is Thanatos and the Necros in the Greek, so clearly recorded for us in the virgin language of the scriptures, and gave so pictorially, and then to these cults who do not even have a mind of spiritual phenomena because not believing upon the Lord, they can never become spiritual phenomena because they are still dichotomy in nature. And this person claims that he has understood the Bible and he says that I have proved from the Bible that Lord was not crucified. And I don't know what, what was Pastor Rockard in keeping in his mouth when such kind of a fool is claiming about my Lord that he was not crucified. I think he was not keeping the virgin languages in his mouth. Maybe you're sucking something else by keeping in his mouth. These persons, they go for debate and try to blaspheme me, my Lord, and which are recorded and have, been, and have been telecasted day by day and week by week. And it is not a device that they are blaspheming my Lord, and it is a sin for you if you do not defend the divine holiness of my Lord. And that sin is on part of you because you have not prepared. Since you have not been prepared, you will never have to know the truth. And if you do not know the truth, you do not know how to defend my Lord. The fire shall be ever burning upon the altar. That's what it says in Leviticus 6.13. The fire which indicates the un undying devotedness of my Lord Jesus Christ towards the work for which he has been sent. And if you as a believer, you, if you know that you can also keep the fire continually burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Then you know what is your undying devotedness towards Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your undying devotedness should be to learn and apply Bible doctrine in your souls. Learn the word of truth from the virgin language of the scriptures through ice concept. Isagogical, categorical, and exegetical study of the word of truth. If you do not know this thing, then how you shall keep your fire burning upon the altar? As told in Leviticus 6.13. How is it that you want to be away? How is it that you want to replace the fire with all such kind of a gasoline of stuff wherewith we are having the emotional field of today's Christendom, which is blasphemy to the core? You think that emotion can put on the fire? You require wood to put on the fire. You require coal to put on the fire. And that coal and that wood is brought only when you have Bible doctrine, which is the word. It is not brought to your emotion when you jump around, when you dance around to your music. And when such kind of a sheer out of blasphemy is taking place in the Christian pulpits, how is it Zachary Knight will not claim very easily that Lord was crucified on the cross? And when Pastor Rucker had given the chance to debate, he would have been up to the point telling to them, apart from the, taking the word from the original language of the scriptures and telling to them, this is right, this is wrong. Whether they accept it or reject it, we don't care. In Isaiah 53, 9, he would have told, the death which have been used for Mavath was a plural one. It is not a singular. He would have told to them that was one representing the spiritual death. When he said, I thirst, when he said, it is finished. And the physical death, he said, into thy hands I dismiss my spirit. That's the sixth and seventh phrase which I have to, have to cover. But the fifth phrase, I thirst, shows the importance that wherein we have been told to give top priority for Bible doctrine. But with Lord has centered his entire humanity upon the Bible doctrine, it is our way, where Lord God the Father desires and part of every believer to show forth his undying devotedness unto Christ. And what is that you can accomplish if you do not have love towards Bible doctrine? What is that you're coming to church weekly once to show forth what? Your old sin nature attitudes, area of strength, area of weakness, lust passion, area of strength so that you can do good deeds and you can be patiable saying that I am right. Lust pattern saying that I have so much of money to be done that is what in the approbation society what they do. If they have much of the money they give dedication to the poor and say that okay it is helpful for them so that he can get his name back. You may be happy with your own conscience, but your conscience has to jive with the conscience of my Lord God Almighty. And that conscience of him has been given in Bible doctrine. 
And if the pulpit is not preaching you that exegesis and that doctrine for you, then quit that pulpit. And listen to the pastor teacher Warwick. He can teach you from the words and language of the scriptures. And graciously and freely given to us is the ministry of Robert Bunker Thime. Get the tips graciously. Search in the internet. You have his tips right from the basics to the sophisticated spiritual life or spiritual dynamics. Get those things learned day by day, each and every tip. And stick on and learn to the integrity of my Lord. And know what spiritual gift God has given to you. If you have the gift of a pastor teacher, then communicate the word in the geographical location where you have been placed. And stand forth to the integrity of my Lord and fill in the gap. And if you think you cannot do that, Lord help you out. Because your positive volition has to be disciplined towards Bible doctrine. If your positive volition has not been disciplined, if you think you can replace with all such kind of a sheer out of an emotion, if you think that you can tell the world that I have led a good life so that I have a good testimony among the people, it doesn't matter anything for you because world possesses old sin nature. It is as good as you compare yourselves and you say that I am right, but you have not been compared with the one who has been commissioned for you to send. That is what we have been given, that divine immortal soul to be commissioned, to be answerable to, to God. The divine immortal breath, what we breathe. So that your immortal soul, which possesses that conscious, makes your thought, whether to take decision towards positive, towards Lord Jesus Christ, or towards negative, not to believe upon Him. If your soul takes decision towards positive, that to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal life, then you believe upon these facts, which is truth. Christ is the truth. Father is the truth. Lord God, the Holy Spirit is the truth. And where you take them, where you apply them is left to you. But we have been given this mandate in this unique dispensation of the church age. So great and unique privilege that never has been given to you any dispensation in the past or in the future. Even as such, my Lord Jesus Christ was not having this in his hypostatic union, though he was a prototype. We are the operational type of the indwelling controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Then to he fulfill this course. Then to he kept his fire always burning upon the altar. And how is your fire that is burning upon the altar? Are you having the same undying devotedness unto Christ to love his word, to spread his word, to become an evangelizing nation for you if you are an evangelist? Or to rise for the missionaries to train up the good biblical colleges? Because it has been told in the Hebrew school thought of the Anger Bible Dictionary, where with, very clearly he records the history and tells to us, if a place where there was no synagogue of Bible teaching, that place was excommunicated or totally destroyed. Is your place where you are surviving with not having that sort of a Bible school? The dean of the college, that is, professor, who is the pastor teacher, in return should take care of that school. He has to train them up. He has to train them up from the origin language of the scriptures. Preferably not, it is an absolute command to train them in the origin language of the scriptures. And if he really loves my Lord, he has to learn those things and he has to teach it in the congregation. And how many days you want to play around with the havoc, with your own life. Fooling yourself, fooling your congregation, trying to be great with God, but rather in return, you know you are a fool in the sight of the Lord. Because you are not here to preach them the original language of the scriptures, but rather you are replacing with exegesis all such kind of a sheer arts of emotion, jumping, dancing, miracles, healings, and calling yourself jackasses like apostates or prophets or XYZ. How long do you want to fail in the ministry where the Lord has kept you free? How long do you want to enjoy these privileges only for the sake of your lust passion, but not to give yourself like a drudge to dig in the word from the original word and get in and show forth the things which are there for you to show forth to the congregation? What is the purpose of your duty of you being in the pulpit of a pastor teacher? Do you think collecting bribes, that's what I call collecting tithes, is the way that Lord has been happy? In the New Testament, you did not even have a single word concerning tithe to be given by a believer to the Lord. As Lord prospers you, that is what you have to give. No way is concerned tight in the New Testament. But the people are blaspheming, my Lord, following the practices of the Old Testament till date. If they're following the Old Testament practices, then they have to follow the practices of the ritual sacrifices as well. And if today any person wants to put that tight, let him go to Palestine and put there in the box. If they have the treasury room. And if you find it today, that is occupied by the Mamadinians. And where you go and put your treasury box? In the doom of the ark? Correct your thinking, you fools. Try to learn the truth. Dig the truth. Have a positive desire to learn this truth from the original language of the scriptures taught by a right pastor teacher for you. I'm not here to just 
tell so rudely for you, but I am here to tell for the pain of my Lord, wherewith I am suffering here. To show for the people how they are going around in their logistical manner of foolish mind, who are senseless, arrogant, reckless, and extravagant to the core, not able to change in the pulpits for exegesis, but rather replace it as living a blasphemy of life. Until and unless you correct yourself to the thinking and align yourself for Bible doctrine, no matter what sort of a life you are living, it may be good with you with the surrounding environment where you are surviving in a geographical location. But as far as my Lord is concerned, as far as His doctrine is concerned, be careful that should, you should not be turned to out a believer who has lost his reward at the judgment seat of Christ. What profit do you think you can gain in this world? Who is the poorest man in this world? The poorest man is the one who doesn't have Bible doctrine in him. If you have Lord Jesus Christ, you have the blessings of your spiritual realm as well as, as, well as the material realm in this world. And if you do not have that Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior in your hearts, <clears throat> that is believing upon Him, and what else do you require in this world? Though you have the entire world put under your feet. If you do not have Christ in you, that is as simple to a point of zero zero point zero zero. But the problem in today's Christendom is the apostate leaders who are occupying the pulpit. They respect their value more, they respect their person more, they respect their teachings more rather than the teachings of Christ. Because they are credible for their respect in the society. And that's the hard ignorance of their heart in the truth that they do not want to change themselves and jibe towards Bible doctrine. Lord, help you, brethren, at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't worry each and every word that you speak, advisably by the all sin nature, or unadvisably by your emotion. You are answerable to my Lord. But we are here to tell to you, being under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, be always advised by Bible doctrine to learn the truth, to execute the truth, to know the truth, and tell to all that thy truth alone shall reign forever and forever. Because his truth is exemplified above his name, as told in Psalms 138.2. And where you take, how you take, what is your consideration point of view is left to you. If you want to take it into the light of the Lord, take it. If he doesn't want to take it into the light of the Lord, forget it. But you are answerable to my Lord. And the way what you are answering now, particularly the review of the subject, we are telling to Zachariah the seven phrases which my Lord spoke on the cross for the debate wherewith whether my Lord Jesus Christ was really crucified on the cross or not. And on that, the fifth phrase which has been told for us, that I am thirsty. That's what Lord God the Father desires on each and every part of the believer, that they also should have the same joy, same reverence, same absorption, and same realization towards his Bible doctrine, so that we also can learn the truth and know the truth and apply the truth in our lives. Learning and knowing the truth in this unique dispensation of the church is the mystery doctrine of the church wherewith you have been given this sophisticated spiritual life when you pass all the three stages of spiritual adulthood and starting, starting a stage from spiritual self-esteem and then spiritual autonomy and then spiritual maturity and passing down all the evidence tests wherewith the Lord has kept for you, then you are an invisible hero when you pass down the last test and you become a maximum glorification believer and you are one known as winner believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, in, and at present today's apostate period, we hardly find any few winner believers in the Lord we do not have those people who are giving top priority to their lives in Bible doctrine rather than anything else. For them, first should be Bible doctrine when they go down through the stages of spiritual adulthood. If Bible doctrine is not number one priority in their life, that is what they are becoming void. They are becoming cold. They are neither hot nor cold, but rather they are losing it out. That's what exactly the things that are happening in today's Christendom. Many of the people, they are not having that desire to learn the truth. Their discipline has been replaced with the undisciplined volition of emotion, wherewith they think jumping around in emotion is a great source for us. And in today's Christendom, we find 50 to 60 percent of the Pentecostal crowd following and replacing Bible doctrine with all such kind of assurance of theology in their pulpits. In fact, even the so-called great Baptist churches or brethren assemblies are also replacing exegesis with just such sort of moral teachings in the pulpits wherewith they are not able to understand what exactly to tell the truth. If they want to learn the truth, 
then they have to heed the instruction given by Robert Bunker Fime in his exhaustive ministry of 53 years in the pulpit, by which he has taught them every day the original language of the scriptures and the importance of interpretation of it in their source, so that you can realize what is the true purpose and meaning for your life. And these things we have been reviewing and telling to Zakir Naik as such, even he also can get the tapes very freely, so that he can understand those things very clearly taught by my guru, who is Robert Bunker Thime. And we are telling to him, being dichotomous in nature, he can never comprehend the trichotomous thing. The trichotomous things could be understood only by a person who is born again. And how to be born again? He has to believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the only Savior of this entire mankind, wherewith he died as substitute of spiritual death upon the cross, and that we believe upon him as our only mighty Savior, not as just a mighty messenger as the Muslims believe, but we call him as a mighty Savior of all time. And this is what he has perfected forever and forever. Number one, fulfill the consciousness of my Lord, so that the throne of grace, what integrity demands, it has been fulfilled. Number two, the consciousness of a believer. That is by faith alone in Christ alone, not by works. Many of the people in today's Christendom, they are saying that jumping around, walking around the aisle, raising a sign or, or raising a hand or signing a card is what it makes you so that God sees you and Lord raises your hands. No way, no chance at all. Though all those things are sure out of blasphemy, which were passed out in the pre-canon period, wherewith when it has been told to do that, it has been told for them, for the people of the Israelites, that they should know for their Lord and, and raise their hand, and not for the Christian believers, but the so-called moron evangelists who are occupying the pulpits, even the Billy Graham, who doesn't even have proper information to be given for the gospel information. This man comes and tells, you sign a card, raise your hand, no way, no chance at all. By faith alone, in Christ alone, that's it. That is the decision in your soul, in the privacy of your soul, inaudibly the words that you express towards the Lord. That is what you're going to tell it. That's it. And apart from it, there is nothing that you can add to your salvation, which is so great, because a consciousness of a believer has been totally pierced when he believes upon the Lord. And that moment itself, he'll be baptized into the royal family of God. And the feeling is a mandate wherewith we sin, we are out of fellowship. To gain back that, we have to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to rebound. That is a distinct ministry. There are two ministries which Lord God, the Holy Spirit, does. Number one, he indwells permanently. And number two, is temporarily controlled. When we sin, he is lost. But when we rebound and get back, he, is control he controls again. That is what, when we, when we confess our sins, uh, because by we sin either by thought, word, or deed, it is Lord God the Father who wants our relationship to be so pure and so true that we have to confess our sins before whenever we speak this word or when we teach the word or when we raise the word even for prayer, when we raise for worship, that is to proskin it, to bow down and worship, and all these things, what we do, not jumping and dancing, but saying thanks to the Lord for which he has done to us, and all these things when we do, we have to do it through rebound. If there is no rebound, then whatsoever you do is just a sheer rot of a lie. So the two distinct ministries, what Lord God the Holy Spirit does to the believer, number one, a permanent status quo, indwelling of Lord God the Holy Spirit, and number two, which is temporary, which is indwelling, is uh, not, not indwelling, controlling is temporary, because when you sin, you lose that thing. That's why we have been told not to give Lord, Lord God the Holy Spirit, neither to squelch Lord God the Holy Spirit, but rather be controlled of the Spirit. So how you will be controlled of Lord God the Holy Spirit? To rebound, through confession of your sins. And when you are not there on the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, no matter whatever you do, it is just a sheer rot of your life that you are living in this world, which is so rotten, which is so hypocritical, that people may be happy with your attitude, but Lord Jesus Christ is not happy, because though he has given you the gift of as a teacher in your pulpit to preach, you are not exercising it. And I doubt whether you truly have that bona fide gift given by Lord God the Holy Spirit or Lord Jesus Christ of the movement of salvation for you as a pastor teacher. And as you grow up, as you learn up, as you grow and as you realize and as you have that knowledge of discernment of right and wrong, then you will realize what is the gift given to you. Until and unless, if you are not prepared, if you are just wasting around your time, you will never realize or you will never even come close to even exercise the gift which Lord has given so graciously at the moment of salvation through faith alone in Christ alone. And the gift of the pastor teacher is given only to your male believer, it is never given to a female, and that gift will be bestowed by the head of the church, who is Lord Jesus Christ, so that by looking as a drudge, we work day and night as to fulfill 2 Timothy 2.15, which is study to show thyself prudent to God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, a rightly dividing the word of truth. So we are answering back to Zachary Mike by telling to him about the seven crucial points of my Lord, which he spoke on the cross. To make him to understand what exactly is the source of information given to him from Bible doctrine, which could be easily learnt through dispensations. At the same time, answering back the people of today's Christendom pulpits who are occupying and showing for them the importance which has been kept upon their shoulders, that learning the truth shall make 
them also responsible, which is answerable towards the Lord. Because the three great soldiers who are recorded in the eternity, wherewith we have at the well of Bethlehem, the water when David thirsted for them to get, he, they had that undying devotedness of love towards David, so they risked their life and they went and bought a jar full of water for him to drink. But he said, no way, I cannot drink at this cost. That is what we are here to do. We are here to show forth our undying devotedness to Christ. If you truly love as a pastor teacher, your duty is to exegete the word. Risk your life for exegesis. Because those three men never thought that their names will be recorded in the Bible and millions and millions of people would read their name in the Bible. That's a great testimony what we have to have in our lives. If you truly have that love towards your master who is Lord Jesus Christ, then your name could be recorded in the history records of your pages. Do you really love the Lord as those three people loved his Lord David and risked their life in the battle and went and bought a well of water from the Bethlehem? If you are not truly loving your Lord, then your names will not be recorded. You have only one record for you that is in the registry of all the believers. And the historical book wherewith Lord Jesus Christ has to enter into that book, you have to love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And loving your heart is what knowing your Lord. How can you know Him? How can you respect His feelings? How can you respect His thoughts? Feeling which has been used anthropomorphically, God doesn't have feelings for that. How do you respect His thoughts? How do you say you not hurt Him, but rather show the things that the Lord has sent for us to grace to the flock with knowledge and understanding? How is it that you can perform? Until and unless you know not the truth. And learning the truth accurately through exegesis is what the order of a day, wherewith we have been ordained and called and told to us to preach the word, wherewith we have been called Caruso Thon Wagan in the Greek. So this is our introduction, and in the exemplification of the fifth phrase, we are telling him the seven sub points, wherewith the first sub point was to lure a believer from the word of the truth, wherewith they rent their soul to Satan, and Satan fills them with all such kind of a false doctrines, emotional doctrines, and false teachings, and they call themselves, it is great in the sight of the Lord, what they're living is right. No way, no chance at all. No one can be told, apart from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the way he teaches to us, and that teaching is what we are required to tell, to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through proper rebound technique, which is a grace provision, and apart from that, if they come and if they tell, no, you have to pay tithes, you have to give money, you have to do X, Y, Z, that is a lie. That is as simple as that you are giving your rent a room of your soul to Satan. And Satan doesn't want you to give top priority for Bible doctrine, but rather it wants to give for you all such kind of a moral teachings, wherein even the unbelievers and the religion heads also teach. Because we know an unbeliever is going to go to hell is far more superior morally than a believer is going to go to heaven. The only difference is that he is dichotomous and is trichotomous. Thomas. He became trichotomous as a believer because he believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ as a unique savior. But he doesn't believe upon the Lord as a unique savior, so he's dichotomous and he shall be burning in the hell, though he's superior morally enough, rather than this believer is going to go to heaven. Because he has an absolute standard of righteousness imputed to him, but he doesn't have that. That's the only difference. But the point is that when you rent your soul to false doctrine, to Satan and other things, you shall never be profited in it. You shall never gain anything in it, but rather you shall lose it forever. And the second main point sub point of the fifth phrase is that apostate leaders are occupying in the pulpits the responsibility kept upon their shoulders is to preach the truth but they are doing they are attracting crowd with their emotion and the third point is social interaction what we have seen social clubs social people and the fourth point is deception and defunct use of spiritual gifts that is what the spiritual gifts were with in the pre-canon period were being totally ceased we, we, be knowing, we being now in the post-canon period after the completion canon of scripture many of the people are not able to realize the truth nor able to understand the truth nor able to get into the things wherewith they have been so great to call to show forth unto the Lord's glory. They are just going and following once again the pre-canon period and rising apostasy and heretic movement to the, co to the core wherewith they call themselves what they're doing is right, but they're not at all in accord with Bible doctrine. And in that fourth phrase, wherewith they have been, in the fourth point of the fifth phrase, wherewith they have been telling to them the importance of dispensations. We have covered the dispensations of the theocentric period, the Christocentric period, and we are covering now the Christocentric period, wherewith the great power experiment, which my guru calls, where it has been known as the hypostatic union. Yesterday we have learned the things done on the hypostatic union, and today we we shall look the incarnation wherewith the hypostatic union is called as uh, 
other dispensation and God revealed in Christ and then if time permits the great power experiment which is the hypostatic union but all these things we shall do after a word of prayer in the privacy of our priesthood because anything we do we should start with prayer and we should end with prayer because prayer is what what Lord demands on us because we have been told pray without ceasing like a hacking cough where with the people cough around without stopping but prayer is what you learn you talk to God but I prefer let Lord talk to us but it is a ministry for us each and every sermon we speak to start with prayer and to end with prayer because Lord started his ministry with prayer and he ended his ministry with prayer so when you are preaching the word we are doing his ministry and his ministry could be clearly made and clearly done only when we get the things absolutely right from Bible doctrine if you fail to do that no matter how well you think you are doing you cannot do it if you fail to do this simple prayer of rebound and be under the alignment power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to learn the truth to understand the truth to gain the truth no matter whatever you do it is just as a sure rut in the sight of the Lord so we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look into the subject we thank you father for the privilege that are given to us to our fellowship with you through thy word we pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things that we are going to study so that Lord we can make a clear distinction of reference to these unbelievers who do not have that spiritual phenomena to be understood even as such the pastor teachers are occupying the pulpits who do not have importance for exegioma in their pulpits Lord let them understand the dispensational concept so that they can rightly and accurately handle the truth because thy truth is infallible and inerrant but we human are erroneous to the core but Lord it is in your grace that you advise our lips to speak that which is right only when we are faithfully prepared to understand and to make them to realize the truth so father correct them exhort them reprove them and give instruction so that the reproof which has been used could be turned for their glory father if they take it for their instruction it is well and good if they reject it it is their fate but my duty is to tell them like an unprofitable slave that which was my duty to do lord if i have done my duty wrong because if you have been there you would have done much more perfect than us but lord you have given me this ministry though we are indwelling in this all sin nature we do make an error but father consider into thy grace because each and every word we speak we are answerable so that lord we can have right and true fellowship with thee and having that right and true fellowship with thee and each and every word what we speak it has to be coming straight from your mind which is bible doctrine so that lord jesus christ might be glorified for we ask it in christ's name father amen so these things yesterday we have been noticed regarding the olivet and the upper room discourses and the Sermon on the Mount illustrates particularly Matthew chapter 5 to 7 and Matthew chapter 24, which difficulties in interpreting the Gospels that are resolved by the doctrine of dispensations. This doctrine is the biblical hermeneutics, and that makes the various teachings of Christ very lucid. When one understands the different dispensations, one can easily understand to whom that particular message of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been given and pertains to that period. The uniqueness of our Lord's ministry also supports the view that the incarnate of Christ was a separate dispensation this is what we have ended yesterday's tape but today we shall continue in that the incarnation as a separate dispensation the incarnation though brief is a dispensation in itself the presence of the hypostatic union is too significant to be merely part of an another age for God's overall perspective of human history something momentaneous was happening on earth at least four approaches lead to the conclusion that these 33 years constitute a separate dispensation first God revealed himself to mankind as never before in history that is in the person of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he was never made human so that we can have that appearance of our Lord and be blessed because once and for all he perfected our sins forever on the cross and it is no fourth of the animals which could be continued in the scriptures the life of Christ is recorded four times over from four perspective unlike any other period of history second thing what we have God designed the incarnation of Jesus Christ to purchase salvation for all mankind in every dispensation for God from God's viewpoint this extraordinary period throws light across all of history and is not hidden away as part of another dispensation God's design for the incarnation of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ also included an unprecedented system of power that enabled the humanity of Christ to accomplish his mission and that power right from his physical of virgin birth is the is the indwelling power of Lord God the Holy Spirit wherewith it indwelled in him as a prototype and it now indwells in each and every believer as an operational spiritual 
type. The third aspect, our Lord's incarnation is a separate dispensation because it plays a major role in defining other dispensations. One of its characteristics, resurrection becomes a distinguishing mark of the completion of each subsequent dispensation. And fourth one, the approximately 33-year dispensation is like a cornerstone or hinge that connects and divides two very different dispensations. Israel and the church are different from one another because of this incarnation, which belongs to neither of the dispensations. We will briefly present each of these four approaches, wherewith we can see the, in the, the incarnation of a dispensation. Israel and the church separates and connects through God incarnate on earth. And that is what we have our salvation accomplished and the resurrection of our Savior. And God revealing in Christ what we have, dramatic change in the opening theme of the book of Hebrews at that announced place and time. God fulfilled his promise to send the Messiah. Divine revelation never came to mankind in the form of Christ himself. God, after he spoke... God, after he spoke long ago in previous dispensations to the fathers and the prophets in many portions of the written canon of scripture and in many ways divine communication to the prophets in these last days, the dispensation of the apostolic union has spoken to us in his son who is the flashing forth of his glory and the exact representation of his essence as told in Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. And in Galatians 4, 4 through 5, we have this long awaited period of history called this last days in Hebrews 1 and 2. It is also called the dispensation of the fullness of the time. This term is used for each of the two Christocentric dispensations, the age of the hypostatic union as told in Galatians 4, 4 and the church age, Ephesians 1, 10, indicating the close, close relationship between these two dispensations. But when the fullness of the time came, a new dispensation, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the Mosaic law, in order that he might redeem those who were under the law by living a sinless life, so that he also, he was a qualified substitute to receive divine judgment for man's sin, that we who believe in him, that is Lord Jesus Christ, might receive the adoption of sons, as told in Galatians 4, 4 through 5. The uniqueness of the dispensation of our Lord's first advent is also the subject of the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In terms of divine revelation, the written word of the Old Testament passed the baton to the living word in the person of God-man, Lord Jesus Christ, as told in John 1, 1, 1, 14 and 1, 18. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the uniquely born one from the Father, full of grace and truth. No man has seen God at any time, the uniquely born, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has exegeted it or exegeted it, him. And in the great power experiment, God became man and purchase salvation for all mankind of the dispensations, which is past, present, and future. The incomparable influence of Christ's first advent supports the conclusion that this period is not contained within any other dispensation, but must be treated separately and defined in its own terms. During these 33 years, the gospel became an accomplished reality for all dispensations. The dispensation of the hypostatic union was also distinguished from previous dispensations by the system of power that God the Father designed to sustain the humanity of Lord Jesus Christ in accomplishing man's salvation. And we term this a sphere of a divine dinosphere. According to Father's plan, Christ did not use the omnipotence of his own deity to support his humanity as told in Philippians 2, 7 through 8. Instead, God, Lord God, the Holy Spirit constantly empowered and sustained the humanity of Christ amid the hostility of the devil's world as told in Matthew 4, 1, Matthew 12, 18, Matthew 12, 28, Luke 4, 1, Luke 4, uh, 14 through 15, Luke 4, 18, John 3, 34, Acts 10, 38, Romans 1, 4, and Hebrews 9, 14. And this is what the sustaining ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, also empowers each and every believer when they are in the divine dinosphere of the indwelling, controlling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. He was there in the prototype, but we are there in the operational type. In addition to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the divine dinosphere also included powerful assets for the humanity of Christ to master and utilize by his own human volition. Our Lord used this divine problem-solving devices in executing the salvation plan of the Father. Because of the divine dinosphere, the period of the incarnation of Christ may be called the great power experiment of the hypostatic union. An experiment in this sense is a demonstration of a known truth. The known truth is that the omnipotence of God, God the Holy Spirit, and the perfect efficacy of divine problem-solving devices were fully able to sustain the humanity of Christ. In the power of the divine dinosphere, Christ perfectly fulfilled every demand of the Mosaic law throughout his life and death. The divine dinosphere proved effective even under the maximum pressure of being judged for all the sins of man. Mankind. The Holy Spirit constantly sustained him on the cross, as told in Hebrews 9.14, and the problem-solving devices that we call sharing the happiness of God enabled him to endure the judgment of all human sins, as told in Hebrews 12.2. The anticipated 
you anticipate our description of the next dispensation, the great power experiment of the hypostatic union has been extended as a great power experiment of the church age. That is what, what sustained Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross is going to sustain each and every believer today in today's Christendom. That's what the extension of the great power experiment towards the church age. Christ bequeathed to every church age believer the very system of power that sustained him in humanity during the age of hypostatic union as shown in John 7, 37 to 39 and John 15, 10 to 11. Our Lord's proven source of power is now available, available to each and every church age believer, though being ordinary becomes an extraordinary for executing by, by executing the protocol plan of God. The dispensation of the hypostatic union establishes the precedented for the church age. Christ lived in the prototype divine dynasphere. The Christian can live in the operational divine dynasphere. The church age believer has the privilege of living by the system of divine dynamics under which Christ lived, that not by the ritual system of Israel, which Christ totally fulfilled and abrogated as told in Romans 10, 4, Ephesians 2, 12. We shall discuss that things later because biblical problem solving devices apply at all times but are especially valuable under pressure when clear cut approaches are urgently needed. Problem solving devices for the church age believers include rebound, which is 1 John 1 9, controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, which is called as Ephesians 5.18b, faith rest, grace orientation, doctrinal orientation, a personal sense of destiny, personal love of God, impersonal love of, man, of all mankind, sharing the happiness of God and occupation with Christ. All but reborn were used by the humanity of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for him occupation with Christ was spiritual self-esteem. These concepts are explained very clearly as we make a detailed study as provided in the subject. Obviously, the known truth in the church age power experiment is that divine power and problem solving devices are capable of handling any situation that could possibly confront us. And giving definition to other definitions, we shall require them tomorrow because this is what one of the most important subjects for us is. And this concentration is required for them to know and to learn in depth, particularly wherewith you have been termed in this hypostatic union of the church age, wherewith the great power experiment which has been extended to this church age believers also that they can give top priority for Bible doctrine, they can learn this truth, and even as such, make an accomplishing fact for them that they have been given so great of all time. Even the Old Testament saints desire to look into this, which Abraham, which Moses told to them in the tent. I wish everyone in the tent could prophesy under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. That has been fulfilled in this church age. We, the believers, have been controlled by Lord God the Holy Spirit, but we are a failures not to give top priority for his truth. We are not even equal to that men of Bethlehem, wherewith they risked their life to get water for David to drunk, a well of water from the Bethlehem, a pot of jar. But we are not even like them, how much more we can be the undying devotedness given to us towards Christ which shall never be burning we shall never put off and that's not possible if you have that source or the fuel which is Bible doctrine for you to be done if you think that you are not having Bible doctrine and if you can live more than that then you are a failure in the sight of the Lord because gone are the spectacular displays of divine power typically of the pre canon period gone are the dramatic rituals and ceremonies of previous dispensations. The post-canon period of the church age emphasizes doctrinal thought and personal application of doctrine. The Christian lives by divine truth in his own soul rather than deepening, depending on the emotional stimulation of their overt rites, divine appearances, direct revelation from God, or miraculous deeds performed by a few highly visible Christians. Even in the pre-canon period, the emphasis on doctrine is characteristic of the church age as told in 1 Corinthians 14:19, five words of edification rather than 1,000 words of emotional ecstasy, which they call during that time was a dialect. But in today's Christendom, after 80.0070, it is not a dialect. It is the Angasomuta's demons which controls their vocal cords and ruins the growth of a spiritual life. The church is the most concentrated and sustained presentation of God's grace in all of human's history, as told in Ephesians 3.2. Continual spiritual growth is the believer's objective in every dispensation, but in the church, the means to this end are more powerful than in any other age. Mystery doctrine teaches that God gives each member of the royal family access to divine power in his inner life as told in Philippians 3.10 while providing the problem solving devices designed originally for the humanity of Christ as told in John 15.10 and 1 John 2.6 spiritual victory lies in using the assets of our indwelling control power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit the result of the progressive attainment of spiritual maturity with all the mental and emotional richnesses that maturity brings which can be possible only when give, we give top priority for the doctrinal thought which is Bible 
doctrine. No matter how well you think you can perform, it is left to you. And even when we are having so many of problems to be solved in our own Christendom, this dichotomy nature person who is so ignorant, moron, reckless, extravagant, he thinks he has told to the people that Lord Jesus Christ was not crucified and he has proved even from Quran and Bible also what a sheer out of a lie it is. He is not only deceiving himself, he is even deceiving millions and millions of Muslims who have been born to the same father Abraham and if they keep the law, if they know how to honor their father and mother, they also should believe upon the same Lord which their father believed. He believed upon the Lord known as Lord Jesus Christ and if you Muslims truly believe upon you your father that he is your only true father and you have been born to Ketur and Hagar to respect your father like the Rechabites and honor the Lord Jesus Christ by believing upon him because he is the only savior he is the only God becoming God man and he is the one who has been born out of slave market of sin able to release us from us us who is able to release us from this slave market of sin which is a sin of unbelief of death because everyone who is born through the meiosis of male and female or 23 chromosomes supplied by male to 23 chromosomes of the female is what is being born into the slave market of sin that's why we have a virgin birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has been come out from out of the slave who is been born out of the slave market of sin and releases us when we believe upon him from this slave market of sin so when we be released from the slave market of sin of death we have been now believing upon the lord as believers in the lord jesus christ and now we became we become born slaves of the lord and savior jesus christ by believing upon his work on the cross that's your transformation and your inner transformation of your inner man could take place only when you give top priority for learning bible truth and that's not possible Zachary and Mike, for you till you fail to believe upon the lord jesus christ your spiritual phenomena is darkened no it is totally dead far less you think it is darkened and these things we can understand more clearly more in depth as we continue this tomorrow but we have only simple knowledge simple wisdom given to you to believe upon the lord because Lord knows very well the end from the beginning. He can easily trace you back. Where was your failure? And each and every page when we read of your life as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that day is not worth, if you have not spent that day for Bible doctrine, if you have not given that time to learn His truth, if you have not learned the original language of the scriptures, if you have not learned through exegesis, through isagogical and categorical study, we have nothing for you to show forth. Because you learn exegesis and right information only when you are under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not grieving Him, by not squelching Him, but rather living a close relationship in that divine dianosphere, wherewith it's your own portfolio of invisible assets and it's your own palace wherewith you execute that protocol plan of God wherewith Lord has designed to you and you learn the truth and the truth shall set you free so how well your pages will be read will it be read like those three men of the David who risked their life and have been eternally recorded in the Bible and millions and multitudes of people they are read about him are we, are you going to be a person wherewith you do not even have a name except in the registry and for unbelievers at least we don't have any hope, any hope or any chance because they could not even have the name register in the book of life because they failed to believe upon Lord Jesus Christ and this book of records where we ought to speak will be recorded and kept how well you are doing it it is left to you if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ give top priority for exegesis and these closing movements have been given to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life the scripture is very plain very lucid and very clear he who has the Son, that is Lord Jesus Christ, has eternal life. And he who doesn't have the Son, doesn't have life. And inaudibly, you express your volition towards God the Father, saying that you believe upon the Lord. You express that volition in your soul, saying that, Lord, I believe upon your Son, who died for me as substitute to spiritual death. And that believing at that moment itself, you shall be baptized into the Holy Spirit, into the royal family of God. And you shall be controlled of the Spirit. And when you sin, you shall lose that control. By rebound, you shall get it back. That is temporary ministry. That's why you have been always constant to be filled upon the Holy Spirit, to be controlled of the Holy Spirit. That is pleroma, with a new status of the old one, of the replacement. So these things is left to you. But first, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn out from dichotomy to trichotomy. And we shall walk two miles with Zachary Reich to tell him to explain at each and every tip what he listens, what we are giving to him. You should believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing upon the Lord, he has eternal life given to him. And whosoever has been there listening to the step, irrespective of the religion, what he follows, Christianity is not a religion. In his religion, they teach him to do good deeds, but we Bible call them ministers' cloth. 
believe upon the Lord, the only good work which Lord Jesus Christ has done, which is acceptable in the sight of God the Father, because of the divine immortal soul imputed to you, the same chemistry which is used between diamond and charcoal, the same chemistry is your soul, that soul which has been imputed for the unbeliever even to the believer as well, but this believer becomes trichotomous by believing upon the Lord, but you also have the same soul till you could believe upon the Lord, the same chemistry is the same, if you do not believe upon the Lord, the same chemistry will turn out to be charcoal for you, if you believe upon the Lord, this same chemistry will be turned out to be for you something known as diamond, only when you grow up in Bible doctrine, the way you take it is left to you and the way you pulpits pastors preach is left to you the way you want to deceive the crowd is left to you but don't forget to remember that one day you're answerable for each and every word that you speak and that day should not be a day of great wrath upon you as an unbeliever not to believe and for pastors and for preachers a day of double punishment wherewith we shall be examined twice and this last moments for those to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ inaudibly in the privacy of their soul, they can have this eternal life. So we continue this tomorrow. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that are given to us. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that are studied, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.